Hi everybody, I'm Zaid, this is The Bookshelf, and today we will be going through uh, my newest acquisition. It's an unboxing video, and that means... Is that upside down? No. Marrow Productions Kickstarter exclusive... well, not exclusive. Marrow Productions Kickstarter for the game Journey Wrath of Demons has arrived. I'm happy. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this, and a lot of people have been going through it. So, having a lot of people have been saying how awesome it is. So, I've got my knife out. I got some cut things to cut. Let's do the unboxing. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of narrative while we go through this because um, if I was just going to do a, you know, bland unboxing one, I'd have a much better camera to show you guys everything. And two. Um, how do I put this nicely? Y y there's other people who've done that better. So if you're um, hoping for just a real good close-up at the models and the contents, um, you know, no, no, no hard feelings. Go ahead and switch off to another channel. There's um, some pretty good guys who have um, gone through the contents. Probably some of them are just five or fifteen minutes long, and they really, um, really show off the detail of the miniatures very well. I am doing a more content and consumer report, and I'll be going through the minutiae associated with this. So, let me just start by saying Journey Wrath of Demons is without question the biggest board game box I've ever gotten. It is big, it is heavy, it is very fancy looking, it's easily up there with every other quality production I've ever seen, and... I guess it's part of what the wave, which would be called um, gourmet board games. Just like um, it also fits the quality for gourmet miniatures. By that I mean typically with a miniatures game or with a board game, what you want is something that has a, a certain price and quality tipping point. Like um, your typical family board games that everyone grew up with, your Monopoly, Sorry, Connect Four, etc. These are games that you should reasonably not be paying more than twenty dollars for. Probably, I mean, honestly, th th there's a reason everyone's joked that everyone has like ten copies of Monopoly in their garage somewhere. And um, you know, they're they're very simple games. They come with a board. They have a pair of dice or a set of dice. They have um, some counters, a very sparse rule insert, and um, not a whole lot else going for them. So I got the top box off. Um, really nice artwork along the sides. Don't know if that's really visible. It's a really dark box. And let me just um, pull this all out really quickly so you can see something else. Um, Something else is just pretty, pretty nice, actually. Uh, advertisement for future products is right here on the box. It's like um, White Bones Demons expansion, which would be expansion number one. The Soul Hunters and Cleansers um, extra figures. The Spider Demon expansion, which is number two. And the Evil Spirits, the Jingyao and the Jingyao. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I'm not very good on the Chinese. For um, those of you who are interested, the Kickstarter has um, completed for almost everyone except Canada and Australia, possibly at this point, for you know multiple reasons. So um, everyone has gotten the base game, but the extras that people purchased have not been released yet. And of those extras that will be included, I will be receiving the Evil Spirits. The White Bonic Demons and the Soul Hunters and Cleansers. So, if you would like me to make a video when those come in, showing you what we got in that, um, I'd be happy to make a brief one. Okay, now let's go through the contents. Uh, let's start with the basic ones the map tiles. Now, um, I was talking, and I probably lost my um, train of thought a little. But like I was saying, gourmet board games are anything that has, uh, let's be honest and just call it what it is, a higher price of entry. 
your basic board games are your Parker Brothers stuff mostly, and those will run you maybe ten to thirty bucks depending on the type. Twister is really cheap, it sh or if it isn't, it should be. It's just a a color coded map of a you know and a spinner. That's just that's just a joke. And um, the same happens with war games. You typically are expected to pay. You're expected to buy an army squad, and your army squad should have like five to ten units per squad and the cost should be something like one to three dollars per miniature that's just buying bulk even GW keeps to those prices although in recent years it's kind of been going along okay on the opposite end are the gourmet board games and I'll go into that a little after I'm finished with that now the map pack sorry the map tiles include these special things which are um, maps as well but also counters now you have your bridges bridges are an important part of the game because they are what connects the two tiles now um, make this a really quick visual representation you have four different styles you have lava you have a wooden drawbridge across a chasm. You have two wooden uh, stone bridges across a chasm. And you have a sort of raft-looking thing down a spinning river. Now, the nice thing about these is that they're double-sided. So you, sh you get two of each design. And they were smart when they made these because... Um, each of them has a different design on the reverse. So if you want to have two lava pits, you are not uh, forced or stuck with either two wooden planks over a vo uh, chasm or two wooden planks over a seat. You have the option to have three different styles. So that's um, a clever thing. It made me a little OCD on it originally, but um, that's the way it happens. The next content is... Um, is the uh, double-sided markers for all sorts of items in the game. We have on the top row your um, Chinese-style peasants counter. Right next to it you have numbers counters. I don't know what these are for yet, honestly. Over here, beneath the peasants, who are villagers, you have to rescue. Um, a weird marker, I really don't know what they're for. Beneath that, you have wells, you have sutras, and you have mystery or prize boxes. Um, wells are refreshing. Um, sutras are your game objectives. Mystery boxes have rewards of many types. You have four icons for the main heroes, and you have a bunch of doors that are closed on one end and broken open on the opposite. For the most part, all of these are double-sided with English on one side and Chinese on the other. Well, I guess I guess you could call the numbers English, although they're Arabic numerals, but never mind that. Uh, and for anyone who backed the Kickstarter or anyone who is interested in purchasing from the Merrill website, the these counters are for the most part replaceable and that actually includes the bridges as well actually I think because they release um, resin sets for virtually everything first player through fourth player turns um, doors open and closed the sutras the boxes the only thing I don't think that is actually represented in game are villager miniatures which you know is a bit of a shame but with other games you can probably get something this uh, I wouldn't hold please don't hold me to that though because I really don't know that there's a lot of Chinese miniatures on the market right now. I mean, um, you got some samurai, you have a lot of medieval, you have fantasy. I don't know that Chinese um, dynasties are a popular miniature range. And if you know of any, please share a, share the name or a link in the comment section. I would love to check those out. Next come the map tiles. Um, those of you who see my Super Dungeon Explorer review know I'm a big fan of map tiles because they really do um, create the setting for the environment. There's just nothing like them. Now um, these I probably 
going to be favorites of mine, but um, I was unfortunate in that when they arrived, I noticed that it looked like something had dropped my map, the just the map packs actually, none of the rest of it's damaged. So it looked like the map pack had been dropped because the corner was bent inward a bit. And you can see, and you probably can't see it, but it's um, led to some fraying and just some discoloration and damage to the pattern. Um, it may not be worth doing anything about it, so I'll just live with it. So let's talk about what we got. We have a the interior of a hut. Actually, it's a pretty decent sized house compared to most miniature games. Very decent sized. On the reverse, these are all two sided. We have ruins with a large um, central, I don't know, it could be a plaza, it could be some type of kiosk, but it has um, four stone columns across it. So that's an interesting design. I do not recognize what these statues are around the center. So that's two designs already. Um, that's one, two, let me just count these quickly. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are nine boards in total. Next up, we have a Buddha garden, is it? It's, or is it the interior of a shrine? It's a little hard to tell because, um, unlike Super Dungeon Explorers tiles, each of these sets is closed completely. If it looks like it has doors, it's not going to be in this set because um, the doors are tiles that are placed, so all you have are enclosed wall sections. I think this is supposed to be a monastery, actually, maybe a, a central shrine, because it has the type of um, monastic bell. It has the Buddha statue in the center. It's got um, little areas with votive candles. Um, it's got bones littered all over it, and it's got some prayer bowls, so it looks like a wrecked, which sacked, or ruined shrine, but it's definitely a bit of a Buddhist shrine. So that brings up three. The next tile is, uh, appears to be surrounded by lava, and it's a large dice, maybe an altar. Interesting looking set. It's very colorful, very colorful indeed. Next map is uh, also surrounded by lava here on the edges, two of them. Unlike Super Dungeon Explorer, it, this set does not suffer from having to have four corners on each side. Here, anything can connect to anywhere, which makes them a little bit more flexible. This tile set is pretty much a stone walkway leading up to a, a cobblestone style walkway up into an actual you know, mortar and stone type building. Um, either an entryway to a building or maybe just a exterior platform. That's pretty nice. The reverse is a repeat, the first one. It's the exterior shrine with four columns, so that makes five unique patterns so far. Next tile is uh, reminiscent of the last one, except it's still surrounded in lava. It's not stone, it's cobblestone exterior. This looks like the inside of a palace. Possibly a throne room. Yeah, it definitely looks like a throne room here. The reverse is really nice. It looks like the site of a... Um, what is it called? Either a ritual or a graveyard that has been... I don't know... Sacked? <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty nice scene. It's got uh, it's pretty dark with a few things of light, and there's, oof, I believe that's a dead horse with its sides ripped open. That's not very pleasant. Okay, that's up to seven unique locations. Next tile, we have a repeat of the Buddha ha statue in the center of the monastic hut, I guess. Reverse, we have a repeat of the desiccated graveyard. So that's still seven unique, more tiles. Next set is, looks like farms, crops with 
wooden planks along the edges, so um, docks next to a field, maybe a, I'm not sure what um, Chinese agriculture looked like, so this may be a, a tributary from a river, it may be a, a water spring that comes up from the earth and that's what feeds everything, it could be an artificial lake, I don't really know. Um, on the reverse we have another copy of the desecrated graveyard, so that brings that particular terrain up to three of it. And I think we're still stuck on eight unique maps. Next map we have a repeat of the farm and water source with the wooden planks, docks, whatever. The reverse, however, is a small house. It looks like it could be two stories because um, over here you have these winding sta staircase that goes up to a top floor. Um, I guess that means that the bottom floor underneath it is just like a closet or whatever. It's a, it's a nice design, I think. I, I like it. it has, it's nice to have a little bit of um, projection. It creates a layer effect so that everything that has walls like this where you see the interior side is like ground floor and everything where you see the, the sides of the walls just level with the top of the walls that have been sectioned off is basically a top store. So stop top story. So technically you could have two layers on the same um, game board. I don't know if elevation will come into play or if it'll if it's something that may be worked into later, but it's a nice option. So with that unique house, we're up to nine. Um, we have another house. I'm pretty sure this is a repeat of the first one, the large house with the open farm area. Checking that very quickly. Yeah, that's definitely a double. And on the flip side, we have the second house over again, so that's a double of that one as well. And the last tile is, again, the farm. So you can hook these up together. You can have a farmhouse um, and three fields, rice paddies, I guess, possibly. Who knows? You will have um, redundant fields to create a sort of unique uh, uh, a scenario for like multiple of the same type. So just like the opposite side, which is the second house model again. That's all the tiles. Um, yeah, um, it's a unique design question, I guess. Like um, when you make maps like this, do you want to have doubles repeat themselves, or do you just want to go with unique builds each and every time? Um, there's something to say for having like similar locations throughout, repetitive um, scenarios, just to keep the the action contained to your uh, raid the village or uh, save neighborhood houses and whatnot, so um, I'm not going to criticize it. Um, I kind of like it. Okay. Uh, let's go into the box. Next items. Um, oh, these are going to be fun. Now, uh, we got the spinner. Works better than flipping coins or dice, which I suck at. And um, let's go over these things really quick because these are a bit of a nuisance. We have these uh, little spinner things which are meant to attach to these. Now, each of the heroes has a card. Let me open that really quickly. No, nope, that's not what I need. I need this in here, this little bag of bits, <laughs> which aren't actually bits. None of the miniatures are, in fact, in pieces. Quite the opposite. Everything is completely built within the game so that you can play it straight out of the box with the exception of these dials. Now it took me a little while to figure out what I'm looking at, but um, I think I've pretty much got the handle of it. These cards are not just the stat count, the stats and a brief description of the characters. They are meant to be the counters for all of the various resources that play in the game. So here you have your um, karma, good and bad, I believe. That's from the uh, Kickstarter description and this central dial, I don't know what it's from. Um, karma, corruption, positive karma, negative karma, correction, um, 
positive skills. Oh yeah, okay, let me get these. Um, sliders along the top, that's why this is punched out. Green for Monk Shah. So you have to just plop the large section in, slide it in, and you're good. Ready to mark on your card where you are. This is not particularly tight, so um, yeah, you want to rest it down so you don't, you know, drop it down and lose the thing. And the way these things work these things. The way these sliders work is you have to take the proper counter, check it onto the, uh, you know, make sure the holes match up, and you are going to need to push these, um, I guess they're like tacks, I'm not sure. They fit together to close it like washers. And um, you need to push it through the front, because if you push it just through the rear, you need to push it through the card, the large section, through the hole. I'm just sounding ridiculous, I just know that. So that it's snug in place. You need to attach the dial properly, so that the right uh, dial goes to the stack counter it's supposed to go through. And when you're done, you fasten it in place with the ones with the tinier button. So, um, yeah, tab A goes into slot B. Um, there are three types of wheels, just so that you know. There is the, there's the white wheel, there's the black wheel, and there is the red wheel. The red wheel, without question, goes in the center. So make sure you have it facing forward. Push it into place. Nice and snug. The counter will appear on this section here. And we fasten it into place. Uh -huh, doo -doo -doo -doo. This is actually pretty... yeah, it's not that hard. Um, I'm pushing it, sliding it in, not too big a problem, it slides cleanly. It's just cardboard, and the cardboard is nicely treated, so um, as long as you don't scratch anything up, you'll be fine. You can do it from the bottom if you need to. I don't know if these cards were meant to be, you know, like inside something, but you know, functional works. And um, that's the only one that really matters. You can do white or black on either one you want. Um, the bottom one has the black half of the yin-yang showing, so you may want to have the black number so that it's more easily visible. Or if you want to do really contrasting, you can have the white one, I guess, so that you have the white behind, a white yin-yang within the black section, and the black section within the white one over on the other side. <laughs> I prefer uniformity actually, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the white to fit within the white circle and the black to fit within the black circle. So, punching this in. Now, I've got to do six of these, so let's talk briefly about gourmet board games. Oh, and remember, when you're pushing these, don't push your um, these washers, I guess, or whatever it is they're called. Don't push them through the side that's where you want to see that's where you have to see the numbers you want to push these in through the center of the yin yang symbol like so keep this hole clear this side clear this side closed okay you need the white one so like i was saying um gourmet board games like gourmet miniatures are supposed to be of a higher quality than what's available commonly on the market. Now, anyone who plays GW games knows that the prices are more expensive than virtually everything on the market. I would say that used to be true. I don't think it is the case anymore. Um, but I'll talk about that, which is related to Kickstarter and the other um, phenomenon that have come in another, in another video. Leave comments if you're interested in hearing about that. 
hearing my views on that anyway. But um, to wrap it up, a, a gourmet board game, like a gourmet's miniatures game, is something where you expect to pay, you should expect to pay maybe ten dollars per miniature. Like you're buying single packets, it's always going to be more expensive than buying a squad. Like a squad, you average one to three dollars per miniature. Here you're paying, um, here you're paying. 10, 20, 30, and you're only getting one, and sometimes you're not even getting one massive one, like with War Machine or Hordes, your $30 miniature is technically more like a siege engine or a vehicle, and you need a lot for that game, but never mind. They're like a squad in of themselves. This is not the case for these sorts of gourmet games. You are expected to pay $10 per miniature, you're going to need a full amount of miniatures, and what you're getting in return for your excess investment in capital are miniatures that are significantly higher in quality compared to ordinary stock, or at least that's what you're supposed to be getting. Same applies to board games like um, Journey Wrath of Demons, like Kingdom Death, like who knows how many other games that are out there. So if you're, um, if you're one of those people who prefer quantity to quality, Gourmet is probably not the way to go for you unless you really are a fan of the theme. Just know that when it comes to Wrath of Demons, this definitely applies because this box cost a hundred bucks on Kickstarters, basically. And it is includes a little over 33-35 miniatures. Not that many, I'm thinking. I haven't counted them. I didn't read the box insert very quickly. But you're not getting that many miniatures. Like for a hundred and for a hundred bucks, which is going to be a hundred sixty retail, it's already available for sale right now. You would expect to get a full Mantic army, like a full anything army on you on on um, eBay, anything like that. For this, you're getting a relatively small amount of really high quality miniatures. Now, I'll show you what a finished one looks like. Okay, you have the spinning wheel dial in place. Perfect. The snap is snug, and, but it still smooth, slides smoothly. All three locations, so whatever happens here, be it positive karma, negative karma, corruption, etc., he's good. This slider up top is... Um, now it's functional, it's not great. Um, one thing I noticed is that the tax for these would have fit right here and it would have been a nice touch but I've gone through all of these and yeah there's only enough for each and every one of the boards so there's only 15 of these push tie of these um, push tacks to keep the wheels in place there aren't enough for you to put in these sliders and seal it off so that your slider won't come off so um, that's going to be a bit of a storage hassle. Keep that in mind. Um, keep the plastic bags and just store these sliders in afterwards. They will fall out very easily. That's one minor complaint. They could have, um, Marrow could have easily just slipped in another one, two, three, four, four pair, another four pairs of these push whatever they're called. I just feel dumb saying it. They could have put added in four more pairs of these plastic washers to make sure that you could f start five since you have to add K Loon as well another five pairs of these things so that you could make sure that your sliders didn't fall off it's not a huge complaint I mean compared to like losing dice or counters in your Candyland game that's pretty standard just like losing cards but it would have been a nice detail to add in as it is um, that took a little bit of a while conversation talking almost nothing about gourmet miniatures but here we have the five boards for the four pilgrims and the giant dragon K Lun. And I've got to try to make sure I don't drop these anywhere when I'm pushing them away. Okay, now, uh, next item up for bid we have all the packs of cards. We have four, three tiny ones. I'm not even going to pretend what size of these are in inches and centimeters. And your, starting, and your standard playing card size. Now, let's do the um, easy ones just off the bat because um, this has got character names on the back and that'll be helpful. 
Um, reminder that these are just the standard cards. If you pledge for the Kickstarter, there are exclusive cards or a bonus deck as well. I'm not sure. It's been two years since the Kickstarter started. And yeah, almost to the day. Today is um, October 12th that I'm doing this. So it's been almost two years since this came out. I don't remember what I got on these. <laughs> but yeah, um, there are supposed to be special cards. Let's look them over. First thing to note is that we have cards that have sharp corners, and all of these are the enemy minion cards. Now we have the bull demons, who are called Barok, the archers, who are called Barnhas, Barhas, we have the centaurs, who are called Buff. Let's see. I'm going to do this and then hold it off. Okay, we have the Barok, Barhas archers. The buff, who are the uh, bull centaurs, so bulls mixed with horses, interesting. The borak, who are the bull, uh, I'm sorry, bull demon generals. Although honestly, I think, yeah, that looks like a sort of human-esque head on him. So I think um, these are kind of more like human demons than anything else. Oh well. We have Kogaiji, who was alternately called Red Boy, I think, by some. Probably because he's. His upper body um, appears to be coated in blood on this thing. We have Yazuiji, who is referred to as Princess Iron Fan. And we have Kurog, who would be considered the big... <laughs> the demon king, the bull demon king. And that is everyone. In case you have trouble with that, there are the Chinese names, I guess, in the front. And the... English-ish names in the back. Ah, bull centaurs are actually called bull zerkers. Don't know what being turned into a zo. Well, I don't know why being turned into a centaur makes you a berserker, but oh well. Um, I sort these quickly, and they are regular rounded edge cards, so they're easy to pick out from the others. The um, monster stat cards, sharp corners your typical trading card. These are round corners. These are actually, um, I think they're supposed to be uh, so, what is it? shuffled. These are the pilgrim decks. Um, we have Tripitaka's deck, that would be the monk, which has all of a bunch of spells available. And the same goes for Monkey King, otherwise known as Sun Wukong. Uh, Cho Hakai, otherwise known as Pigsy, and Monk Sha, who probably is just called Monk. Oh <laughs> well, uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a confusion to me actually. Monk Sha is a monk, but Tripitaka I thought was a monk as well. He's a Buddhist reincarnation of something called the Golden Shikada. Shikada. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, maybe he's not a monk. Maybe he's a priest. Maybe he's a sage. It's, um, I don't know what those differences would be in Chinese society, in the Chinese mythology. So I'm just going to leave them at that. Okay, moving on to the smaller decks. The first one is the demon deck, which has uh, it's basically your spawn deck. It's got all of the monsters, how many appear and which one at a time, so I can only assume that the game uses randomization for the draw deck. The next one is actually two decks. It has your very white border fortune deck and your very black border misfortune deck. So um, the fortune deck seems to have a lot of stuff like uh, healing items for your um, health points plus to your stats and healing for your chi so apparently you spend chi to do stuff the misfortune on the other hand has the tendency to make stuff spawn you lose health points you lose chi points you lose karma so um, yeah I guess um, the game mechanic said that if you defeat a demon you have an option it's, it's not straightforward kill whatever's in your way that's actually an important mechanic. You can do things, you can either kill them demons outright, which earns you negative, 
karma, possibly misfortune, or you can cleanse them, which I guess purifies them, which means that this Chinese mythology implies that demons are corrupted humans or something else like that. And that will give you positive karma. So depending on which you spin, or depending on what the event is, you'll get uh, to draw from the cards and the effects will go into place. Okay, the next deck is apparently status cards and miscellaneous. Now most of these are called corruption. All of these have something slightly different in the back. For example, some of them are reading Curse of the Dead, Weekend, Chan Chi, Demon Distraction, okay. Solus, quite a lot of different things with the effects listed on the back. Uh, Demon Rage, no idea what that does right now. It can't be good though. The rest of these are status cards and character cards. So we have all your typical effects burned, um, poisoned, paralyzed, disabled, probably other status effects that come up with the new expansions if and when I get to see them. Not likely to be this year, it'll probably be next year when they get released. It's pretty. It's not likely they'll arrive before Christmas, I don't think. And the last set are character cards matching the others uh, in the full-size deck that are drawn. I don't think these are meant to be pulled like um, random. Actually, I think those are meant to be upgraded because they have weapons. Monk Shaw has the Cursed Staff, and they are organized by levels. So at level 1, this one does... These have counters of 1, 2, and 3, and each one says how much damage it does at the wheel. So I'm going to need to look up the rules to see how that works. But basically each character has a weapon. It levels up from 1 to 3 and um, there you go. So far no trouble with anything of the cards or the spinner. I hope this thing doesn't break but um, if it does then I guess I'll just be flipping a regular coin and I guess it's probably more stylistic now, but it was part of the base box, so we can presume it to be part of the experience for everyone. Okay, now I'm going to go quickly over the miniatures. Um, gourmet miniatures aren't really what I do. I'm not a wealthy person. I'm not even a moderately wealthy person. So when I get something, I really want it to look... To, I, I really want to be able to enjoy it. And these guys, I did not believe it when I saw it, but I thought, yeah, these are going to be very good. The main box has, I guess you can say the main box because it's the largest one, has the four pilgrims on the top, a row of archers, bull demons. You have the tiny villains at the bottom, sorry, in the middle. That would be um, Red Boy and Princess Iron Fan. You have the Bull Generals and the Bull Berserkers at the bottom. Now, um, let me just say, these guys are plastic. Um, I'm going to pull off some easy so it will really appear well on this. Uh, Pigsy will do. These miniatures are actually really big compared to your normal scale stuff. Uh, I'm going to pull out a Games Workshop miniature just for scale. Hello, Possessed. So here we got a Possessed Chaos Marine, as you can see, compared to Pigsy. And it's pretty comparable, but then Space Marines are somewhat large models. These guys are easy. Well, Pigsy himself is within the range of these type of characters. So, um... I'm feeling the plastic for the first time. The weight of it is honestly not very noticeable. Um, I'm moving the rake. The teeth are on the rake are kind of iffy. I don't mean iffy that they're delicate. I mean that they're all pointed in multiple directions. I'll be honest with you. I've never seen a rake used as a weapon before, so I'm not sure what this is supposed to look like. But it's here, it's intact, and it works, and yeah. The detail on it is really good. I don't see any flaws or bubbles, and um, any discoloration, I thought, or something, maybe a hole. Just run my finger over it, and it's actually um, just a small piece of 
I don't know, debris of some type. Could be from the vacuum molding, could be from the packing, who knows. But all in all, um, the miniatures are all integrated into the base. For some reason there's hole on the bottom to make it look like it's been fastened. Probably um, just um, all the marrow production stamps on the bottom fixing the place to make sure that everyone knows what the miniature is from. Um, the detail is really good. I am not an expert painter by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I'll be honest, a lot of people say that um, Journey Wrath of Demons has no dead space. Like, um, I think one, one reviewer compared it to like a bag of chips. You open the box and it's mostly empty space. These boxes are mostly empty space. There's just no way around it. The miniatures are only about yay thick, out of yay thickness. So you're not really getting a lot of miniatures in this. You are getting miniatures that are very protected in this. So if I buy these, I paint them, I will be putting them back into these storage boxes so that nothing happens to them. Now, um, for the others, what can I tell you? Um, this box is going to be all of the bull demons. No need to go crazy with them, just pull them out, you can see them. A bunch of bull demons. They're all pretty much the exact same miniature model. Um, I thought at first that they were kind of um, bullish compared to other miniature lines that have done um, things like minotaurs and the like. Um, I don't actually own many. I've got some Reaper Bones that have that. Um, the scale is pretty much the same. I thought they were pudgy belly, but no, they've got washboard abs just like everything else. So um, if you want something that looks kind of yakish compared to your typical western style um, minotaurs or bull minotaurin, um, these are a pretty good fit, I would say. And finally, we have the bull demon king and the giant dragon. It was a pretty different style altogether. Uh -huh. Not a great camera, skipping on that. What else can I say? That is everything that's been included. I gave you a quick demonstration on how to fasten the materials. Everything you saw is everything you get. You don't need to do too much to uh, pull it out of the box and start playing. Assembling these cards is really the only time-consuming bit of it. Everything else is pretty simple and straightforward. You get the miniatures, you pull them out of the box. You have to make sure you don't lose all of the cardboard counters. Not an issue for playing with resin. There is, by the time you pack everything back into, back into the box, I am reasonably confident when I say that there is more than enough space for you to store everything the way it arrived and you can probably add more of the things that you will purchase later like the uh, I don't know that you could fit the expansions in here but you can definitely fit the soul cleansers and the soul hunters in the box in here whether you can do that if their boxes have the same type of protective insert packaging to make sure that the miniatures don't get damaged in transit and the such, um, I can't tell. I can't guess. Um, so far, the only thing I can say with confidence is that Mero is not packaging these cheaply, so things should go well in that regards. For, um, being able to keep this stored safely and enjoy it for generations to come. <laughs> at least that's the idea. Um, you know what? I, I shouldn't laugh at that. This is a very expensive board game. There's just no way around it. Um, other games, I, I don't, I'm don't. i not normally the type of guy who buys $100 board games. I'm not usually the type of guy who buys Gordon games, period. I'm usually just the guy who buys miniatures. But I, what I saw here was really good, really nice. I thought this is going to be a thing. 
hopefully people will play with will want to play it just on based on the visual the Chinese aesthetic is very unique you don't see a lot in uh, miniatures gamings or board gamings that focus on that era too much the style of the miniatures is just wonderful and I'm hoping the gameplay will match that the game does have a cooperative players versus the automated machine aspect to it so it may not be for everyone then again you know I've not I've never known too many people who are happy to play the role of the dungeon master or villain to fight against their friends hero so maybe co-op games are the way to go not my thing to say that's pretty much my review now is it worth a hundred dollars to me or 160 to you now that the Kickstarter is over that's the price you'll be going for it um, I'll be honest I'm I can't I can't make that cut and dry a decision this isn't like um, games workshop games where you know that there's an existing fan base so you know it doesn't matter what store you go to in the US you know you're gonna find someone who plays something in that area related to the company on the other hand this is a board game. The rules do look like they're supposed to be somewhat intuitive, so it could have a low entry curve, and because everything's contained within the board game, aside from expansions and extra characters, it should be easy to pick up and start playing compared to miniatures games and the like. Um, I'm not really a board game type, so judging on board games as board games is probably not something I should be doing. In the end, I'm a miniatures guy, and I got this primarily for the miniatures. I think they're gorgeous. Um, I'm really looking forward to the extras that haven't arrived yet. The soul cleansers and the, um, the white bone demons in particular are uh, miniatures that fit more along the lines of other games I could play very quickly. So um, even if they are miniatures that don't belong, into those other games. There are very likely miniatures that I'll be adding to those other games. Or I'm using the same techniques I've done with miniatures from those games. If you like the theme of Journey to the West, um, which has been inspiring for a lot of generations, or uh, you know, even most people are familiar with it today, sort of, thanks to the mythos of the original Dragon Ball, um, you'll have, you'll have uh, you'll have a chance at finding an audience uh, gamers who are receptive to playing it. On its own, the theme is different. It's ancient Chinese mythology. Whether that's a good hook, I can't tell you. I haven't really seen too much in American culture that focuses on this um, era, this country, this theme. Uh, it's a specialist situation. So I am just going to um, say, on on the surface values, you know, they're gorgeous miniatures. It looks to be a it's great packaging. They're gorgeous miniatures. I'm thinking that the game should be intuitive, fun to play, easy to learn. We'll be testing that one as the years come, and everyone has their chance to comment on that. Meanwhile, uh, this that's pretty much the end of this unboxing and review or I guess analysis um, very impressive all in all very impressive as a hobby I can see painting this taking up just as much time as actually playing the game and being just as enjoyable so if you have someone who has always been a fan of this type of scenario or setting or this type of um, if you have someone who's a fan of Chinese history or mythology, this could make a pretty good gift if they're also into painting. If they're into gaming, I think there's a, a good, uh, good. I think there's a pretty de decent amount of variety and richness for um, different things. The price point, I don't see um, too much being able to argue for it. It's very, um, it's very, it's, it's. I don't think it's hit and miss. I think it's just niche. If you're someone who is happy with ultra high quality miniatures, um, you'll definitely 
I think you'll be satisfied with your investment here. I can't compare it to any other game of the sorts. I've never seen anything with this type of quality for these type of miniatures outside of Games Workshop, Space Marines, and such, and Arena Rex, uh, the Roman Gladiatorial Miniatures game. The quality of the, of the miniatures is very high. Um, these are plastic, resin are, even, are supposed to have even higher detail. I can't speak to that. There's, I don't have I don't have any regrets on this. There's a zero on the regret factor. I don't see myself reselling this anytime. It's um, but I also don't know if I'll be able, I don't know if I'll be pulling it out to play it. Probably pull out to have m m miniatures on a, a shelf. That's a good possibility. I definitely see me using the boards for a variety of games. Don't know if I'll be playing the game itself. That's up to seeing how the rules go. And I'll be playing a couple of test games. I don't think I'll be making videos of that. Um, this isn't a Let's Play channel. But on all consumer-wise, if this is your type of things, and if you're a type of person who has the budget for this type of game, this is a wholehearted recommendation. If you're not someone who's a fan of Chinese culture, if you're a mega board game enthusiast, I don't know that this has the hooks that you would want to make it an auto include. Um, it'll come down to gameplay, and that'll require someone else to really tell you about this. So, thanks for sticking with me for this lengthy review, which was longer than it probably should have been. Um, I didn't talk too much about the lore or my inspiration for why I got this, but that's okay. Um, I'm Z, and I am signing off. Have a nice night.